Now, as you can see, I've got quite a bit of a sketch going here today. A lot of trees, my horizon's very high. And that's going to cause a couple of problems for us later on if we're not very careful. If you put your horizon that high, you have to do um, a lot of detail in the foreground. It's super, super important. I'll show you a lot of that later. You know, we'll make a note of it, but just know that's a very high horizon line. In order to pull this perspective off, you got to make things very big in the foreground. So with that larger than normal disclaimer out of the way, I'm going to take some titanium white and some clear gel. And I'm going to just tint this with some yellow ochre and maybe just a little bit of our Hansa yellow, okay? What that's gonna do, and again, I've got clear gel. This is instead of, I didn't paint any clear gel and white on the background, so this is dry. Anywhere that's not painted with this gray is dry. And I'm going to just place this in and around it. And this is the same as doing one layer of white and then blending your yellow on top. But because of the way I want it around my trees, this is how I, I'm gonna do it for today. I'm gonna go around my largest limbs and whatnot. And I'm okay with some of that gray, just black and white there, um, mixing with some of this. It's, that's not going to bother me, really. Now I'm going to place in some trees by just rubbing here with the brush, just rubbing like this against all of my um, light, light, come on now, get the words out, light color that has been just mushed in there, very thin. And see, I can, I can do this. I can pull these up. I don't want very much. See, I want this kind of to be a misty uh, look to this. I think would be kind of pretty. All right, yeah, there, there. That'll work little by little. Again, using a three-quarter brush just for the sake of, of a little softness, you know. A little easier to time blending some of these colors. Well, I like that yellow I just stuck in there. Yeah, this is good stuff. We should take this time and thank our Patreon members. If you're not a member on Patreon, I would suggest going because at least checking it out because um, we do a lot of fun and different things there, including, um, well, obviously the crazy long lessons and then the, the monthly live streams. And every once in a while, we'll just do something fun for no reason at all, like a, like a painting critique or, or just something random. And uh, it's always fun. There's just a lot of just kind of do whatever on Patreon. Whatever I feel like doing, I typically oh, will just get on and do something. So there you go. Or if you've got questions for me, you can actually message me directly on Patreon. And I'm actually pretty good about getting back there. Now I'm working in several areas here of dark just to bring everything forward. You can kind of see what we're achieving already. Yeah, just a bit of a soft and smudgy background that I think will be beautiful for our trees. We can, we can deal with our trees on top, which I think will be nice. You know, you could you could go as detailed with that as you like, or you really don't have to. You don't really have to. It just depends on what you want for your painting. Now, right over here, I'm just going to continue with dark, and I'm going to continue down this way as well. But let's go ahead and get this filled in. Not black. Oh, no, not black. Dark, but not black. I want there to still be two or three values where I can get darker on top of that in order to show, hey, there's more going on back there. This isn't just blank, flat dead area. We're going to have a lot now. I'm mixing clear gel with all this because otherwise, I'm, you know, it's going to take forever. We should take a look at the paintings that you guys did at my last one. And if you're not sharing, use the information on the screen to share your paintings with me. I'd love to put them in the next video. Now I'm continuing here with the flat brush just to create, um, I don't know, some extra stuff in the background. This is some Hunza yellow here and some muddy green, whatever's laying on the palette. I've got my light, which you can't really tell yet, but I'm, and I may open that up, make that a little brighter. But uh, right now, let's go ahead and get some light. Feels like maybe some light grass and bushes, which we can establish a little more definitely later. You know, just want to get that going. And then right down here, I think it would be appropriate to go ahead and get, so that's, that's a bit of like a, maybe the creek, or just, a, just the rocks you would see of the creek there. Go ahead and get that. I just want the light stuff in at this moment, not the not the darks necessarily. Just getting in some lights. I'll put the darks right on top. Let me just get a couple more lights up real pretty. So now I've got this darker green here on the fan brush. I'm just pulling some uh, fan brush color up into this area. You know what? This can be really done in either two stages or in one. I'm kind of doing it in one where I'm doing my highlight and my shadow and not not doing all my shadow and then all my highlight, if you know what I mean. So just continue. Again, this is my little, my little, uh, looks like, you know, where the creek maybe feeds this little 
I can just picture it feeding this little tiny creek right here. And so, yeah, we'll just kind of keep that preserved without trying to cover that with grass if at all possible. And you know what, just little by little, building this up, putting a lot of color, a lot of variation in color in this area. Now right here, see, I can wipe my brush. Really, you could use one for light, one for dark. I'm just using one at this moment. I may grab my other. I've got a clean one sitting by. I just didn't grab it. Um, but right here, you know, I can begin to fluff. And see, now that I put that dark there, I can actually bring this light and, and hit against it like so, pushing upward and just creating this, these grassy layers. And to me, that's just pretty. It's supposed to look a little wetland, a little mossy, you know? It's, it's supposed to look not ne necessarily swampy, but certainly wet. Now I'm gonna place in my trees up here in the background. And rather than going just with black all the way down, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lighten uh, this color quite a bit. This is a kind of a gray, some purple, black and white all mixed together, put some yellow ochre in it. I want something that's a little bit brighter, not so dark. Let me get a little more of our white. Okay, not not so not like too bright, but you know, somewhere kind of in the middle. Now, um, where's my sun going to be? Right here-ish. Yeah, maybe. Maybe here. You can do either way. Maybe right there. I'm going to well, start with the ones furthest away. I'm going to paint in. There, those tree trunks, that looks awfully dark. I'm going to lighten that just a little because I want it to look almost as if these are being burned by the, the light. You know, the light's just going wham right through here. And there you have it. See that? Of course, we'll put some leaves up on these uh, limbs and whatnot, so it doesn't need to be perfect. But that looks good. And this is just where the light is going to be. Really, that I, maybe I'll start down here and then work this up. There we go. Boom. Yes. Just where that light is, is going to be where all of this light color is. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some black and, and burnt umber. And that would be my color for because these trees are actually pretty close. That'll be my color for the rest of the tree. And it'll look, if I blend them together just right, it'll look like that sunlight is just burning through. Stop that one right there. It's just burning through the tree like that. I actually think that looks pretty much the way I want it to. And I've got a nice kind of a yellow green color mixed up on the palette. Very bright, nice and nice and um, sunshiny looking. Okay, <laughs> yeah, let's, let's get up here. And let's paint in just by just by touching. There's really not much going on up here, so I, I am able to just get up here and just use maybe say like the corner of the brush and just begin to dabble. I am pulling, I'm stroking the brush and not just tapping. I'm doing that just I don't know, to get kind of a softer look, maybe. Just I don't want it crazy. You could just use the detail brush if you want to, but this is gonna be faster. I just don't think it's necessary to use the detail brush for this yet. I mean, you can if you want to, but, and I probably will <laughs> probably come back and, and mess with it, but, but I'm gonna get most of it done with a fan brush. I'm a big fan. Oh, no, I did not even mean to say that, but yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I'm not even gonna finish. We're just gonna move on. There we go, changed my mind. I see a spot right here that I think really would work for having a little sun peeking through the trees. So here it goes. I'm gonna take the shop towel and first off, get, I mean, you can't really, you can see it there. Get some of that paint gone. We don't need it. <laughs> it's just gonna get in the way. Let's put a little paint on. I've got a quarter inch flat brush. I'm just gonna take some pure white right here. Let's go ahead and put some pure white. Oh, you can't use pure white. Oops. <laughs> there is no pure white in oil paint because the moment it touches even, even this little bit of brown that's up here, it becomes something other than pure white. If this was acrylic, I really would uh, tint that. So I do believe in that um, rule. <laughs> I do believe in that, but uh, and not in oil because you just can't get pure white even if you wanted to, in my opinion. Now I've got yellow ochre and sap green, a little bit of burnt umber, mostly yellow ochre and sap green. That's an uncommon mix, but believe it or not, it's an extremely pretty, wonderful mix. And it's one that you should, you should use quite a bit because it's, it's unique and it looks, in my opinion, sap green, yellow ochre, are just so pretty. I don't, we don't use them a lot, but I tell you, sometimes they're great. 
And this is exactly what we need. It, it gives a beautiful, warm shadow green, which is pretty. You don't think a warm you know, shadow is typically cool with a lot of blue in it or purple, but this is a beautiful shadow color that I think just, it, it really lends itself because there's no that white light back there. That's not really, that's not really yellowy sunlight. And I think this is just beautiful because it just balances well with that. Now, in some ways, it's kind of a repetitive little section of the painting, but it's okay. We're going to work through it. I'm just a very little paint here. It's just dry. I'm going right over that, filling in all my little holes. It's amazing if you're using only one layer, how many times you get those little canvas holes. And that's where tinting the canvas really comes in. You know, that would really shine right here if we tinted the canvas. Of course, we didn't. And we're kind of too late to do it now. Most would be an appropriate painting, certainly, to tint the canvas on. Now, I've got a, what is that, just a little leftover purple. I was just playing around. Okay, so I'm going to throw that in here just for the shadows and for the sake of uh, just pulling everything here together, color and whatnot. Now, I've got some kind of yellow green. Of course, the whole painting is yellow green, but uh, well, there it is anyway. Let's go ahead and, you know, at least, so I've got a lot of like mossy grass, but at least here, let's start establishing something. Uh, maybe over here, I don't want it too, too bright. Let me darken it. I'm gonna darken that up just a little. Let's go ahead and see what happens. I wanna create right here, some small-ish sort of plants, bushes and whatnot. I'm beginning to bring in a little detail and maybe this is a little earlier than normal. It is, it is, it's definitely earlier. Look how thick these trees, that is way bigger than normal because our horizon is way higher than normal. You see, this is, um, there's two ways to do this. Either you're gonna be up in a tree looking down on the scene if everything here is fairly small, or this is more of the effect of you're sitting on a rock or something right here by the water, and that's why you can see more of the, the landscape. It's like, it's like the, the right down here, it's gonna be like the blades of grass are right in front of you, they'll be very tall this tree trunk here really wide compared to an 18 by 24 canvas. That's proper perspective and that is the most important thing at all in this painting is gonna be that proper perspective. You could do everything right, <laughs> including the color, which is my favorite part. You can do everything right and you could still come out with a painting that doesn't look right if you're not aware and follow that proper perspective. Now I've got a purpley kind of a brown color, purple, mix up a purple and then add just a little brown to it. Fairly light, a lot of white in it. And rather than change it automatically, like right now, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to wait. I'm gonna smoosh some of that color on, even though I don't want that color. I'm gonna do that as well. This is another one of the same uh, kind of trees, birch trees or something like that, a lighter color tree. I don't know, it could be something else. But I'm gonna smoosh that color, even though it's not the one I want. Like, Why would you do that? Well. Simple, because, of course I do all the leaves and then I do the trunk, oh well. Because that way, I'm building variation in. See, I want a little bit more blue. I'm still mixing a little clear gel. This is something I don't typically do. I'm just playing around. Mix just not much, maybe three, three or four percent clear gel. That's real specific. It's giving me a little bit more of a creaminess and a little bit more of a, a smoothness to this. Not as, not as chunky as it generally is, and it's okay. Because I'm not really highlighting any of this, that's all right. I probably won't get, I won't get any of that. Slippery is a little thinner now. I won't get that along this edge because I'm gonna put a, a, a color highlight on that edge, of course. Oh, there you go. So here's a nice uh, yellow ochre kind of color, yellow ochre and white. That's what's in it. That's why it's a yellow ochre kind of color. Yeah, we're going to now paint in the highlight side. I'm treating this like a birch tree. You know, it may not be. There's other kinds of trees with papery bark and whiter or lighter colors. So fill in the blank, whatever you think this might be. It doesn't have to be a birch tree, but that's the way I'm going to paint it. That's the way I'm going to paint it. So I'm just going to work on, you know, the, the, the look of that rounded, that rounded look where it's slipping quickly over into the shadow. That's pretty. And of course, I'm, I'm anticipating that there's going to be those darker ridges, which often accompany these paper-like bark kind of trees. They, you know, this isn't perfect. This is, I'm just playing. I'm having fun. Just playing around. If you don't want these kind of trees, you don't have to have them in your painting. 
I'm going to mix together some white and some yellow ochre. And as you can see, I stopped and just wiped off my palette and put fresh paint out because everything was getting kind of just muddy green, you know, and I wanted to go into some clean colors down here. And because it's kind of the theme of the painting, I'm working a little clear gel, not much, maybe five or 10% into my color there. And so that's going to kind of represent the sun. Of course, that sun's mostly white, so I'll add a little more white there. There we go. Okay, so I'm just, well, that's nice. Even that dirty brush there. See, I just had an old dirty brush I wiped off on the paper towel to sort of clean it off. And uh, so I'm getting some of that. That's just leftover mud, probably from the rocks, the trees or whatever. So that worked out pretty good. I'm going to touch into just a little black, a little brown, and um, pull in what could be reflections and whatnot. Of course, we know we have a reflection of this tree. I'm just playing around here today. We know we've got a reflection of this tree Some about right about here, maybe kind of in the water. And so there you go. Now I've got a thin down um, color on the liner brush, just a yellow green, same as everything else. And I'm going to bring in some of our larger blades of grass to this foreground area, just kind of trying to establish it, make it look pretty, pretty, pretty close, you know, because um, because of the perspective again going back to that perspective this is important that this is fairly tall and fairly large wide blades of grass not too spindly not too thin i need this to look kind of close up that'll help accomplish that there i, I recommend uh, linseed oil for thinning your paint down but you can use literally whatever you like linseed oil is a good choice now I'm going to paint in some purple flowers here, just with a little bit of our, uh, just a purple mix, just popping in some detail. And I like the way that that brings some interest into the foreground and also some large elements. These flowers are anywhere between an inch to two inches tall, and they add some scale, which we really need in this painting. Now I've got some yellow ochre, some burnt umber, of course my white. I have a little purple here. There we go. Let's see, so my light's coming through like this. How do I want to address this little tree trunk? Maybe right up in here. Yeah, there we go. I don't know, I'm just gonna sprinkle some of this. See, it's not very thin. It's much, much thicker than a liner brush paint typically is because when you're doing an object like this and not, and not really, um, and not a, um, like a blade of grass, I typically, I personally like my paint thicker for, for this sort of stuff. Cool, huh? I like that. You know, that to me looks pretty neat. There's a little crack going down that tree. Yeah, that's kind of cool. I like that. I think it's interesting. <laughs> there you go. Now I'll just grab some more colors, rusty colors, whatever. Green is welcome in there. And our light's in the middle, so it strike kind of just this right side, not too bright. And we'll just sort of develop a little, little bark texture as it comes down right over. That's that old tree root growing all the way out. That'll be a rock. There you go. Some purples, because this is kind of in shadow somewhat, you know, clearly. <laughs> so I don't want to overemphasize the light. I think it would become too weird if we overemphasize the light. So I'll kind of keep it shadowy, if at all possible. Now the paint's a little thin. I'm just going to work with it. This is really basically the last thing I'm going to do, but I've got my detail brush. I typically would not thin the detail brush paint, but I'm going to. So here, I'm going to paint in my rocks very carefully. Again, the thin paint is not something I advocate. I, 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 everything's thin, <laughs> everything is thin. And I'm, I'm, it's just the way it is. I'm not gonna stop and fix it because I know it'll be okay. I know it'll be okay. But if, you, you know, if you're not totally sure, don't be doing this sort of thing. Because thin paint applied too heavy or with a brush like this, uh, shorter, smaller brushes, not good for wet on wet style at all, in my opinion. Of course, that's just my opinion. So, you know, take it or leave it. <laughs> yeah. All right, up here, just creating a couple little highlights on the rocks. I don't need much, thankfully. Don't need much. 
on this side, just a little smattering as it kind of drops off here into shadow anyways there. Well, that wraps up the painting for today. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Don't forget to check out our website, DVDs, and Patreon. Thanks for watching. Well, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Remember to subscribe if you're not already and click the like button. That helps me out a lot. Stick around, watch a couple more videos and stay inspired.